Uh, let's see, Sean Smith. Uh, someone said that the Peacock Flair program mentioned Flair wrestling Puerto Rico after after the last match. He he did not wrestle. He was at ringside with his son-in-law, and he and uh, what's the promoter in uh, Carlos Colon? Carlos Colon got into it at ringside, and I swear it was the worst thing I have ever seen. <laughs> it was. It oh, was horrible. Was. Oh my God! It, you know they wonder why Puerto Rico's not drawing. <laughs> Do they see it that? It was like two toddlers going at each other. It was. It was horrible. It was. You know they were trying their best not to knock each other down because they know they'd never get back up. <laughs> yeah, uh, no, uh, that, no can help that would be way. the match. That would be the match. Oh man! Oh, I'm not going to say it. Everybody knows it already. I'm not going to say what the match would be called. <laughs> Well, Sheldon, I think I think Flair has dementia and can't grasp reality. Complete, never uh, stay away from it. You know, I, Flair does have a tendency, and I think that before he speaks, he needs to get with Conrad and said, "Did I do that? <laughs> Did this work this way?" Because, I, and I'm not saying that that you know when you do a lot of stuff, I find myself these days. Uh, Sometimes not remembering what I did two weeks ago. And I don't know it's because you don't care. You just you just move on. You don't worry about it. You know, you can get in an argue with somebody at this age. Two weeks later, you don't even remember why you even had the argument. Or if you even had one. So <sighs> Flair needs to check and make sure. Okay, when I won the title. Where was Ted DiBiase at the time? And when did he get to WWE? So he don't look like he's lost his mind. But I think he thinks that in his mind. That's what he believed, that Ted DiBiase left because he got mad because he didn't. Ted DiBiase he didn't care if he was the WWE champion. Well, Flair was hoping. You see, what, 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 what I think I think you're misinterpreted. Flair was hoping DiBiase would leave so that they would put the belt on him because he had to be the world champion. But oh, I'm going to be the world champion. There's no, uh, there's no other way. There's nothing else for me but be world champion. He and his wife at the time, whichever one that was, had a big fit at the, what was that, uh, where, where Sting won the title. Great American Bash, I believe it was. I uh, truly believe. Uh, she, lost, she, she, cussed, she cussed Jim Hurd because he lost the belt. I had I think to tell, hey, 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 Rick, you, you what? I think Ted DiBiase worked for Georgia Championship Wrestling at the time he won the world heavyweight title. Sure did. Yeah, he was out there. Yeah, so uh, he, it was years later when he went to the WWF as the main. Oh, yeah, and, and like we were talking about last week, the, they had the big thing with uh, Dick Murdoch, Flair, and DiBiase on Mid-South. Yeah, one, of the great, one of the great – yeah, that was in 85. So. John needs Douglas to sell the company says, to an old-school wrestling personality. Well, they wouldn't have the money, though. You know, I, I'm not opposed to Tony Khan owning no. company. The, the problem that we all have is that he doesn't know how to run. You know, that would be like me buying a football team. Now, I like to watch football, but I could not lay out a single play as to what you do on a football field. I've never done it. I don't know how it works. I enjoy watching it. And that's what Tony has done. He's always enjoyed it, but he does not understand it. And there is, you know, you don't just, have a dream and pull it together. And I mean, the only reason he's gone as far as he's gone is because he's got the money to do it. You know, because we have seen countless guys want to do wrestling shows that has no business doing wrestling shows that could have been successful because they had enough money, but they wouldn't trust anybody else to run it because it was about their ego. And that's the problem with Tony. This is about his ego. That's uh, I think ego is what destroyed the territories. Wait a minute, I gotta take count. I think that's my hundredth uh, rib on the. Uh, <laughs> on the okay. Oh, Jeremy, Jeremy Richter. Hey, that, any kinder Wendy Richter? Always liked Wendy Richter oh, from the great. first time I've seen, him in, seen her in Mid South Wrestling, and she was involved in an angle where she put Jim Duggan asleep. Now here's good storytelling, folks. She comes to television. She puts Jim Duggan asleep on the, and gives him a big old kiss. 
and then puts the ether and puts them to sleep, and it allows the Midnight Express to win the match. Television, they go to television. Wendy Richter's out there. She gets, she becomes an honorary member of the Midnight Express. Has the big, she said, and she says in the interview, I couldn't stand kissing that old, uh, the, the nasty, nasty, stunk reek of everything. And Jim Duggan comes out, puts the big smooch on her, and breaks her little uh, uh, trophy, trophy. Yes, yes. Tremendous story. Telling folks that is storytelling of wrestling. It's never done anymore. I never see them do something on one week and follow it up later on. I don't see it anymore. It's just a let's do something tonight. Let's just forget that we even did it. And let's yeah. just, and next week, let's just do the same thing we did. We'll just do it with different people and we'll have the same matches. And, and there's no storytelling no more. Oh, they, they did something very unique on SmackDown last week. It was the Miracle on 34th Street fight. And uh, this was just, I mean, it was just unbelievable television. And, and you know you've got something to behold when you had a ballerina come out of a box. <laughs> I'm guessing they had the Nutcracker. I'm guessing that they're in the hole. They did. It was the Nutcracker because then you had New Day in the other box and they cracked the nuts. Both, and they wonder why they're not getting three to four to five to six million people no more. It's that well, stupidity. They had, the, they, they had the nutcracker there. Those nuts were cracked there, both of them, both of the Imperium's uh, people there. And Jerry yes. Lawler wonders why his territory went down when he had the uh, the drawing the match. match. Yeah. yeah, I wonder why their territory went down. Uh, love, shame, but they'll blame that on Vince, Jerry Jack. Well, that, well, listen here, uh, it was Vince. You know, we were <laughs> people promoters would get back to producing what the people will want to see, not what you want to see, what the people want to see. Promoters in the day would watch the fans, and if the person got over, they would start booking them. If they didn't, they just, they just, they left. They went to another territory, and and that that guy would watch them. That promoter would watch them. Maybe he'd get over. Maybe you wouldn't, and he'd move to the next territory. There's guys that moved from territory to territory, and it took them the eighth territory before they even got pushed, because that's the only because they learned something within that eight to to get themselves over. Because it was up to you to get yourself over. It was up to you to to be able to get yourself. What if you couldn't? You, you were just going to be in preliminary matches, and some people didn't mind that. You know, Charlie Fulton made a great living out of being in preliminary matches. He didn't care. That's where he uh, wanted and to. the fact is, Jerry, uh, Charlie Fulton was a main event or manager. He was yeah. in main events in some other places. By the time we had seen him, it was in the twilight of his career. Yeah. When MJF worked for MLW, he came off better as just being an arrogant heel. Now he comes over as a disturbed and angry teenager. I'll agree with that. Yep. Me too. Uh, he was and, Mr. Well, Griffith. He was victim. He's a victim now. Everybody's being mean to him. He's a victim. Uh, let's see. Tony Khan. This is from, uh, well, if I can hit it. Uh, Tony Khan mishandled the management of his talent, which forced him into going to MJF probably two years too early. Uh, I don't know that MJF, I believe that re regardless, he believes that his heat that he's getting is the right kind of heat. And, and and really, if he'll just if he'll just if he'll just sit down and listen to someone, and let someone else direct him instead of him directing himself, I think someone a Paul Heyman could take an MJF and make a fourth. Yeah, because yeah. he would tell him, he would direct them, he would he would get the best of them. And but but he's got to have somebody where he. He quits worrying about how he thinks he can get over and let someone else take take the take the reins and say, this is how you want to do it. That's how wrestlers got over. Uh, Ernie Ladd was sitting there. You, you ride with Ernie Ladd in the preliminary match, and Ernie Ladd would go, well, kid, I don't know that that was too good. Uh, you know that drop kick you did? Man, I don't know if you – I think you need to take drop kicks. If somebody calls for a drop kick, just tell them I can't do that. Nope. 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 <laughs> He said, don't do one. He said, and, and he would tell them, he said, now they'll punch us. Look horrible. Don't throw a punch. You can't do it, so don't do it. 
Don't do it. And if they would listen, if they would just, if these wrestlers of the day would get in a car and ride with people after the matches, and I'm talking about not their peers because their peers ain't helping them. The ones that's level with them ain't going to help them. It's the guy up front, Tully, Tully Blanchard. Well, this is what you can do to make this better. But no, they have to go home. They have to go back to the motel room real quick so they can play their uh, their Xbox and until they go to sleep. They don't care about learning that because they already think they know it. Am I am I right? Am I wrong, guys? No, you're right. Uh, learn. It's it, and this is a problem with today's generation uh, is as as promoters, bookers, we know that wrestlers still have to have somebody with their thumb on. You know, uh, because if you leave it to those guys, they're going to go out there and do everything they know how to do in every match they have. So within three or four matches, you've seen it. Everything they can do, you've seen it. it nothing else means anything anymore because everybody knows they're just going to repeat the same thing over and over again. But you can't get guys nowadays, especially in the independent, to understand what you're doing. You're trying to teach them how to work. And they don't have a concept of that. And and Ricky Morton uh, made a statement the other day I saw where he said, you know, you need to learn how to call it on the fly. He said, I know in today's environment, everything's wrote out. You're supposed to do this. You're supposed to do that, whatever. He said, but what happens when you get out here and things go completely off the rail? And now he didn't, he didn't specify, but what I'm saying is, is when the crowd is not reacting to what you're doing, then what you're doing is not working. And if you've still got a long line of stuff that you're supposed to be doing and, and what you're doing is not working, you need to be able to throw that out and continue on but change the pacing of the match and do something that gets people involved. Then go back to your script if you want to. Yeah. But, you know, they're not taught that anymore. And that's sad. And that's not really the wrestlers at the top level's fault, you know, because they're not given a lot of leeway yeah. at all. In, in those matches and and that is a problem that I, I like i said a few weeks back i think we're going to get back to more actual wrestling in the ring and less of the high spots and stuff hunter's already done away with uh the majority of the comedy you know there's still bits and pieces but nothing like we had under vince you know because it was like the uh comedy hour on there for a lot of it and uh and and it has to go back to that because what they've maxed out every company, everybody that does wrestling right now, they have maxed out their viewership, their fan base is where it's going to be. It's not going to get any bigger until they change the product. And you can't go more over the top because then you're going to be getting people killed every week. So you, you've got to go back to the basics because that never changes. Uh, Adrian Harper Jr. Hi, guys. Hope you all had a Merry Christmas. I think we did. Uh, Sean mm -hmm. Smith. Uh, there